hello. You are looking at a dial and sew sewing machine that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. It is a Japanese Class 15 sewing machine and there's not a lot of information out there about it. So that is why I wanted to pick up the machine so that I could bring you the details about this machine. All the special details about this machine will be listed in a blog article over on my website and I will put a link to that article down in the description box below. So please do go over and check that out. I have not wanted to work on this sewing machine because the previous owner had left it setting for a very, very long time and it needed a lot of work to get it back into working condition. I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that I've done so far on this machine to get it back in working condition and maybe that will help you yourself work on a machine that has been sitting and seized up. So without further ado, let's get into it. When you are working on machine, the first thing that you need to do is make an overall assessment. As you can see there, it is bone dry inside of the machine and there is this like black tar all over everything. So what I am going to do is take a canned air sprayer and spray out all of the dust and then wipe it down with a cloth to get rid of that black tar. Now I'm just placing a few drops of Zoom Spout oil on all of the metal moving parts. I'm going to let that sit overnight and see if that will help the machine to get moving again. All of the supplies that I use for this project are linked down in the description box below. So definitely go and check those out. I did realize that the hand wheel still was not making a full rotation and usually when your hand wheel will not turn they will usually tell you that the little washer that's behind this clutch is in the incorrect position but that wasn't the case for this machine the case was that the cam stack was not lubricated so I went in with some synthetic gear grease and did grease the cam stack and then what do you know the hand wheel started making a full rotation without any problems whatsoever however <laughs> that wasn't where the problems finished off at because this would not turn at all what I did is I actually plugged the machine up and let it just run on a straight stitch like so while the machine was sewing on a straight stitch i slowly turned it and it did start to turn at that point then i added some more lubrication to the cam stack and i continued to slowly slowly turn it and little by little it got faster and faster with the turns until I could make full rotation with this uh, pattern, with this pattern button without any problems whatsoever. So now let's talk about the third issue that I've run into with this machine with getting it unfrozen. This is the needle bar right here and I do have a needle in the machine so you can see it. As you can see, I have the zigzag to a five I have it on a four. Now I have it on a five. That is the widest zigzag on the machine. However, the machine is not making a full zigzag. It is making part of the zag centered in the needle plate. And then the other part is not coming over all the way. So it's not making a zigzag stitch. And that is because this machine is still seized up. There is a bar, this little square thing right here, that holds the needle bar in place. And when it moves back and forth, it creates that zigzag stitch. On this machine, this bar was stuck and completely seized up. And no matter how much I oiled it or how much I greased it, it was not moving at all. And as you can see, this bar right here 
attaches to this long piece right here that goes all the way down to the end. And when you make full rotation, the bar moves back and forth. Now it's working, so I'm just showing you how it works. It moves back and forth right there to create that zigzag stitch. Since mine was not moving and not working properly, my last resort was to actually take a rubber mallet and to hit this to get it to go all the way to the left. And then I turned the hand wheel like so. And once it started trying to come back to the right, I took a rubber mallet again and hit it from this side to get it to go all the way to the right. And I had to do that several times uh, before the zigzag would start working fully by itself without me using a rubber mallet. But once I got it working, it worked really, really well. Now, I would not personally recommend using a rubber mallet to move parts that don't want to move because you could actually break them. Uh, because whenever I do a restoration on a machine, I never try to force parts that don't want to move, but I usually just try to oil them until they will move. But in this particular case, that was not something that was doable because I had been oiling this machine for days and still not gotten it to move. And that worked just fine. So now I am about to, I am about to do some sewing on this machine and run it through its full paces and finally get this machine out the door. I have this book here that I have always referred to whenever I'm doing sewing machine restorations. It is not a book that is sold anymore. I have seen it on eBay a few times, but it is incredibly, incredibly expensive. This book has really been invaluable to me because it showed me what to do in order to fix this particular issue with the machine. I think it's on page 119. You can see a illustration of the same shaft that I just showed you inside of the sewing machine. And it really does instruct you on what to do in order to get it moving again. As you but they have the picture backwards. See, this is that little rock shaft, or at least that's what I call it. Uh, and I'm going to show you it inside of the machine. You see, you have this bar here. It runs straight across to this guy right here. And then it comes back. And now you can see that little arm, the same arm that's illustrated in that book. So that was what helped me to fix this problem with my machine. And if you can find this book anywhere online, then I would highly, highly recommend getting it. Well, that is all that I have for you today. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, then please do subscribe. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content. Peace.